Hi there, how you doing? It's your girl Kang Hey and Gu Shubile right here. Like hard not shuberized. It's bad. Spiritual war is off the hinges. I just came out of a series of really horrible dreams. I'm not gonna unpack them because they were all demonic, but I will let you know the gist of what it is under heaven they were suggesting. It's Sunday today, um the I believe twenty second or something of January. I'm in the middle of a fast and a lot is going on. I like Sundays because guess what happens on Sundays? People go somewhere to pretend to be godly and I get to like have, you know, the environment all to myself. So I like them for those reasons. I used to like Sundays for different reasons. I got together with brethren, but now I like them because I get to pretend I have my own apartment. Anyway, anyway, for the only early part of the day, I wanted to clean this environment, but there's no water. So if it's not electricity, it's water. I don't know what's going on with that. Hopefully it'll be eradicated by the end of the day, but it is what it is. But let's just get serious, guys. Um, I woke up having heard from the Lord. Literally, you know that season just before waking up and being asleep? I heard God's voice saying, I'm about to separate the wheat from the tears. I don't know what that means. Those dreams that I had all involved a lot of frustrating activity on the part of the church. How can I describe it? I'm not going to unpack those dreams. They were just satanic and I'm done. Frank Young Bora. But the gist of the message in the dream was you're never going to get your day in court because there are too many. There's too many of them that are up against you and the world believes them and not you. There was lots of church activity involved and I was always in the middle of that feeling very frustrated by my abusive family that was being believed more than me. I was being looked at like I'm some child, some derelict, some deserter basically of morality and all things right. Like this thing that is very frustrating to deal with uh, and that my family has done everything to try and fix and it's not quite coming around and complete strangers in these church environments believed my family. Listen up you guys. This is how you know a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ for real. You will know them by their fruit. They will bear fruit out of e love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, long suffering, self control, goodness, and faithfulness. Apart from these there is no law. But there are also other markers, um that help you identify if somebody is of God. Those who worship God will worship him. It's written in God's word. I believe in John, but I stand corrected. Uh those who worship the Lord from now on will worship him in spirit and in truth. So they will have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's how you know they worship in spirit. They will bear fruit. And then in truth, they will speak truth. Uh, it is also written in God's word, another characteristic of disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, that from their bellies will flow rivers of living water. So essentially they will be really great apologists. It is also written, I believe in first or second Peter, but I think it's first Peter, and I think it might be three or four, where it is written that you must always be ready to give an account or an explanation for the hope that you have got in Jesus. Explaining things in Christ that is very believable is a gift of apologist. You are able to defend the faith, long story short, and you do it with veracity. Now, the scriptures also say the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. So only those who are born again actually see the word of God, the way that it ought be seen and they hear the word of God, the way that it ought be heard. In Revelation, it is written many times across the letters to the churches that let he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That statement is expressly to highlight that there are certain people that you can always preach the word to them. They're always being communicated to the word of God, but they literally never come to an understanding of what it means. That is also written in 2 Timothy 3. It is written of them, those who are far gone, lost in the last days, that they will always be learning, but never coming to a knowledge of truth. So they also hold Bibles. They also go to churches. They also fellowship with brethren. They do a whole bunch of things, but they're tears. But they will always be blind and they will be blind guides. Seeing, they will never be able to see. Hearing, they will never be able to hear. Just like the idols they worship. They are deaf and they are dumb and they are mute. And for those reasons, a disciple will always slay them any day in any conversation about God. So the strategy then of the devil right now, all of the spiritual war that is off the hinges, that's flying, flailing its legs and its arms like a person that's drowning in a pool of water, 
that spiritual war, the intention of it is to just silence Christians. Because when people listen to us, we are believable. Because the Holy Spirit convicts of sin through us, and from our bellies flows rivers of living water. It comes very naturally. It is a heavenly language that you can only roll in smoothly if you are of heaven. If you think about, indeed, your own dialect, what it is that is your natural tongue, you speak in it much more fluently than any other tongue. It comes from you naturally. That even after waking up from a nightmare, you likely will gasp out some kind of a word that is from your native tongue because it comes naturally to you. Such that, nomulele, you are dreaming it. You are dreaming in that tongue. That is how the scriptures are infused into our bones and our members. That when we wake up, or even when we are dreaming, there is just like an understanding that we are gods. And so we gasp for air, saying, Lord, help me, or my goodness, what in the world? This is obviously not of God. We have a way about heaven that is very sacred nature. It comes naturally with us. But a person that is not born again, that is acting, that is faking, that's a poser, that is a weight among the tares, that is somebody that has been sown in the Christian environment to deceive, corrupt, and recruit people for the darkness or confuse. They are not going to walk in it naturally. I always had this theory, okay? And back in the day when I was still all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and looking forward to getting married, uh, about how to know if a guy is worth your while to continue to humor in Christ, right? How do you know if you can still continue on? And for me, it was always about what is it I've just spoken about now. From his belly will flow rivers of living water, and he will not have a difficult time having or maintaining a godly conversation. He will also have Freudian slips, if he's not of God, that are very ungodly. He is going to automatically walk in his second nature. Whatever it is that is very natural to him, that's what it is that he's going to automatically start to manifest after a season. So just hold a conversation with him for an hour, two, three, and this dude will manifest something dark because he's not automatically walking in the Holy Spirit. Yours is to have a discerning ear, yours is to have a discerning eye, and yours is to walk out as soon as this dude starts to, you know, render you, you know, worthless, or starts to vomit some epithets like, about you, or about your faith, that are obviously speaking of, you know, unbelief. I will give you an example. There's this guy that I dated that I thought was Christian. Um, for a season, like for like two months, he did not last. He was in and out really quickly, did the Lord squeeze him out of the dorm. But this guy could not stop talking about every so often meditation that is not godly. Uh, stuff that had something to do with, what, that sounded very similar, familiar to astral projection, trying to make it appear as if there was the kind of stuff that it, Paul was in, where he did not know whether he was in the body or out of the body. Uh, I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe that's a Paul experience. But then every so often he kept on praising ancestral worship. Like, black people in this country have a real bad problem with it, okay? He kept on praising his Itagazelo, all these many surnames that people can have based on gods, the gods, okay? And he, every so often, would burst out of his personality an anger that was not of God. Say, for instance, I would interrupt him in the middle of doing something, and then he would just have this mean-spiritedness about him. That was another manifestation. Uh, however, I remember one time, he, we were, we were just... We were newly uh, broken up, right? Because I was not interested in him anymore. But he was still on my neck, like, really just trying to bug me. And I told him something along the lines of, leave me alone, I'm not interested anymore. And he threatened me. He threatened me. He basically said, you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know who you're dealing with. Christians don't do that. Like, we, we just don't do that. Indeed, touch not God's anointed. Do his prophets no harm. But we don't threaten people with some kind of retaliatory action that might just render them useless. We are not witches. That dude, I later came to learn, was heavy into the occult, but he vomited a whole bunch of obvious, you know, expletives, if you want to call it that, that he released from his core that got me sensing that this person is not born again. Uh, and mind you, it wasn't even his non-born again state that made me break up with him. It was the fact that he insulted me. He offended me uh, one night when I, we were hanging out. And he basically told me that, baby, he said that I'm only pretty at night. And that offended me. My primary love language is words of affirmation. But if you want to make me make it clear that you hate me, you will use words to afflict me. So after that insult, I was like, this is only what, man, one and a half months of us dating. What in the world are you going to call me after two years of marriage? If you can call me ugly at, uh, during the day, what in the world are the insults that are going to come my way when I'm five months pregnant with your baby and I'm all fat? 
what are, what what kinds of insults are you gonna throw my way? So I just put out this trajectory uh, into the future, looking in prospect, uh, in the perspective mode, and saw somebody that had just been very insulting. So it wasn't even so much uh, blurtings of non-Christian activity coming out of him. It was him insulting me, which is also non-Christian. But I ignored all the other warning signs. But the Lord is the one that extracted me by basically using my love language. He, he basically told me he can't even praise you properly or stay on that tip. How much more is he going to fail you later on? That's what caused me to break up with that guy. But from his belly, he tried to flow rivers of living water, but he just simply couldn't. He kept on talking about saints, Catholic saints, you know how they um, deify mere mortals uh, and they elevate them above other hum human beings when there is only one mediator between God and man. They pray to saints, they pray to Mary, they pray... Mm. He used to do that. He, there were so many other people that he was busy reading the content of. And for me, it was like, wait a minute, you're, you're always learning but never coming to a knowledge of truth. And you are being tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine. What exactly is going on with you? Next part.